Welcome back, my fellow machine learners. We are continuing uh, with our series on regression or linear regression techniques. Uh, this is part two. And um, what did we see in the first video? The first video, I spent a little bit of time explaining to you the importance or trying to motivate why you should be um, in your machine learning journey why you should begin with regression techniques, linear regression, multivariate linear regression, logistic regression. I didn't mention logistic regression so much in the first one, but if you want to get into the more advanced topics like neural networks, regression is where I believe you need to start. You need to get a very good understanding of the way regression works. Okay, so in the first video, previous video, that's what I spoke about. Um, I spoke about the importance of learning regression, linear regression. We saw the idea that if you've got a data set, remember the example that we're going to actually do, a, we're going to work it out by hand today. We saw if we've got a, a data set like this, then this means that it's an overdetermined system and there's no unique solution. And so if you are trying to develop a model, if you're trying to write a line, a model or something like that, you will never quite fit the data. There will always be an error between your predicted values and the actual values. And that's called a residual. Okay? That's called a residual. Um, we saw the significance of the beta parameters in our equation. Beta 0 plus beta 1x. We saw what does these signify. So you can go back. Uh, that's very important. And we saw that what we're trying to do is we're trying to we're trying to estimate beta parameters such that your predicted model is as close as possible to the actual output value. And then finally, we introduced, this is where we ended off, the idea of the residual sum of squares, which acts as our cost function. And we saw that, which we're going to do now, Least squares is the method that minimizes this cost function. What is a cost function? It's essentially a function that shows the, an error between predicted and actual values. And, and we're trying to m close the gap between predicted and actual values by varying these parameters. Okay? All right. So here we, here we have again our data set, our very simple n equals 4 data set, right? n equals 4, there's only 4 um, observations. And p equals 1, there's only one feature. Very simple to illustrate the purpose. Now, what are we going to do in this video? We are going to show how do you determine these beta parameters by hand with a very simple example. Okay, so remember, we had to first set up our cost function. This is our cost. Um, in this specific case, it's our RSS. You'll see in, in other examples, you'll have a 1 over n here, possibly, or 1 over 2n. The 1 over n is essentially your mean squared error. It's a mean squared error. You're dividing by n to get the mean. And the reason why you'll see in other places why they put a 2 here is because um, when we take the partial derivative, the 2 comes to the front, and then we divide 2 by 2, so we cancel out the 2s. But I'm not going to do that here, but you can check it out in other examples. All right. So how do we determine... These beta parameters, we have our cost function. Our cost function is simply uh, the sum, our cost, is an error 1 squared plus residual error 2 squared plus residual error 3 squared plus residual error 4 squared. Remember residual? What, what we have here in the brackets is our residual. It's our actual value i equals 1, for example. It's our actual value 6 
minus our predicted value when we input one. And then we keep doing that through each example. So this is our cost. We're summing up the error, the squared, the square of the residuals. All right. So that's our cost, but we don't want to, we can't do anything with our cost function like this. How, what do we need to do is we need to remember that perhaps you did this in high school. If you had some function f, right? Okay, just some function f and some input feature x, and you saw that the function did that. And we wanted to find a minimum value, right? A minimum or actually a maximum. What did you do? You took the derivative of that function with respect to x and you set it equal to zero. Okay, it's basic calculus. So what this would actually do would give you a turning point. So you wouldn't actually know whether it was a minimum or a maximum. And I'm not going to go into the details right now, but this, when, we, when we're working here, this gives us a minimum. Okay, so if we're trying to um, minimize, remember least squares, sorry, I haven't, I haven't spoke much about this, but least squares, what does it do? It minimizes, minimizes the cost. So we're trying to, if this is our cost function, we're trying to find the, the parameter values. Let's call this rather beta, just so that you don't get confused between x and beta, because x we don't vary. We, those are actual values that we have, but we are varying the beta parameters. So even let's call this j for our cost function j. So we, we keep for different beta values, we keep calculating our cost function, which is this, right? We're adding up the errors. And we vary the beta value until we find a minimum cost function. And then we choose the beta values that minimize this cost function. So to do that, we need to carry out calculus and, and determine the derivative of this function and set it equal to zero. But now what is the problem? The problem is, it's not really a problem, but we actually have two parameters in this problem, in this very simple, um, simple linear regression problem. So we are going to have to carry out two derivatives, but this is where partial derivatives come in. Partial, partial derivatives, derivatives. Okay, so we are going to take our cost function and compute a partial derivative with respect to b to zero. Let's just do it here even. So we're going to say partial derivative with respect to b to zero of our cost function. Right, this can be called j or your RSS, whatever you want to call it, okay? And then we need to set that equal to zero. And then there's the derivative of our cost with respect to beta 1. And we need to set that equal to 0. So let's do that. Let's jump right into it. What is the partial derivative of our cost function with respect to beta 0? Okay, so this you have to go and make sure that you understand the idea of partial derivatives and uh, the chain rule. So we take this. We, and we compute uh, the partial derivative with respect to beta 0. So the 2 comes to the front. Let's put an equal sign there. Here's our summation. Okay, and then we, we've got yi minus beta 0 minus beta 1 x i. Right, so the squared has come to the front. But we're not done yet. Now we go inside the parentheses, the brackets. And we see that um, the derivative of beta 0 is going to be minus 1. So we need to include a minus there. Whoops. A minus. <clears throat> okay. If you don't understand this, I, 
you need to please go back and check how you carry out the chain rule. Okay, and then of course we set that equal to zero. Now what about the partial derivative with respect to beta one? Okay, so again, the two comes the two comes to the front. We have our summation there, i equals 1 to n. Remember, n is the number of observations. yi minus beta 0 minus beta 1 xi. And then what is the derivative inside with respect to um, beta 1? It's going to be minus xi. So let's put the minus there. And we've got the xi over there. And we set that equal to 0. OK? So now we've got two equations, right? We've got our two equations that we need to insert all our known values. What are these known values? Right, these are the known values that we have. And we set up our two equations and we're going to have two unknowns and we can solve for them. Okay, so let me... Let me quickly... I'm going to do one line each and then you can do the rest. By the way, uh, I really wish I would have had somebody that could do work out a partial derivative for the cost function in uh, doing uh, computing the, uh, the beta parameters. So I hope this is helping you. If it's helping you, please comment, ask questions, subscribe, like it, etc. Okay, so let's look at this first one, delta. Um, delta cost delta B zero. Let's multiply this out, okay? We've got minus two, and I'm just going to be looking here at my book the whole time because I've worked it out. We have minus two, so now we're inserting um, our y and x values from our table, okay? Here's our x and our y, x and our y. Okay, so just insert these values now. So now we've got 6 minus beta 0 minus beta 1 times 1 minus 2 times 5 beta 0 minus beta 0 times 2 minus 2. Then we had a 7 minus beta 0 minus beta 1 times 3 minus 2 times 10 minus beta 0 minus beta 1 times 4. We set that equal to 0. You wave your magic wand and you should get minus 56 plus 8 beta 0 plus 20 beta 1 equal to 0. So there is our... There is our partial derivative with respect to beta zero. Okay, now del, del beta one of the cost. Okay, uh, we've got again minus two, six minus beta zero minus beta one times one. But now we need to multiply by the, the same value again. Okay, x, x one minus two times 7 minus beta 0 minus beta uh, 1 times 2 multiplied by 2 over there. Okay, minus 2 times 7 minus beta 0 minus beta 1 times 3 times 3. And finally, minus 2, 10 minus beta 0, beta 1 times 4 times 4. And we need to set that equal to 0. And we get minus 154 plus 20 beta 0 plus 60 beta 1. And we set that equal to 0. Great. So do you see now we've got two equations, two unknowns. If you go and solve for this, you will get beta 1 is equal to 1.4 and beta 0 is equal to 3.5 okay so now we have now solved using least squares 
We've solved a very simple problem by hand, and we've come up with y is equal to 3.5 plus 1.4 beta, uh, sorry, 1.4x. 1.4x. This is the equation, the model, the function that minimizes the error. Okay, so this is going to be hitting 3.5 here on the y axis and the slope will be 1.4. Okay, so that was a fully worked out problem by hand. You first have to calculate your uh, partial derivatives and then you plug in all the values and you solve for your beta coefficients by hand. Okay, uh, this, this equation, this is what I also wanted to talk about. This again is from Introduction to Statistical Learning book. Um, I forget which, uh, which page it's on, but you can use this. This is essentially exactly what we did, okay? But it's also another equation. If you didn't want to go through the whole process of computing uh, the partial derivatives, etc., you can go through this. All this is showing you is these are the x values. 1, 2, 3, 4. X bar is your mean, and this is your average value, so that's 2.5 in this case. Yi, again, are the y values in your, in, your, in your target column. And y is the mean, the average, which is 7. So the mean over here is 2.5, so x mean is 2.5, and y mean is 7. So all you do is you plug in these values and you add up and you should get the same answer. So there, here are two ways that you can solve it by hand. Okay. Now, just as a final point, by the way, I hope this helps. Um, this is how you, you carry this out by hand. As one final point, in real life, you are never going to have, well, I wouldn't say that, but you are going to have say 10 features, 20 features, 30 features, 100 features, right? You're going to have B0 plus B1x1 plus B2x2 plus B3x3. And it's just going to keep going. You're going to have tons of these input features. Um, then what normally happens with this even though you could carry this out, there's also another, perhaps I'll put that out in the next uh, video. There, there is an analytical solution using linear algebra, right? Here's an analytical solution. Um, now carrying out the analytical solution is often difficult. So what we do is we carry out something called gradient descent, which I will do in another video. But essentially, the idea is you've got so many parameters um, and you've got your minimum, there's your minimum of your cost function. Uh, you begin with a guessed value of your beta parameters. You compute the partial derivative of the entire cost function and you take little steps in this direction. You take little steps in the direction all the way until you get to the minimum of the cost function. Okay, guys, if you have any questions, um, any complaints, any queries, please, I'd like you to engage. Now, in the next video, I'm actually going to use similar techniques like this in Python. Okay, so be sure to watch the next video. I'm going to show you two different ways that you can actually solve this problem in Python. And hopefully from there, you'll be able to do much more complicated projects. Okay, bye-bye.